Hello everybody, today new video, uh, as I explained it last uh, during the last video, uh, today we are going to see uh, how to make the cam operations on the molds. So I just took the bottom part, but I can show you as well the top part, I will explain after anyway. Um, so uh, let's start with the module manufacturing. I don't know if you have already tried, it's in file and then manufacturing. It's just there. So the plan is to uh, define like a CAM program, define a tool, define a geometry, like and define the operations. And then after we will uh, use the post processor that I already created for my own machines. And then after you should be able to get um, the CNC uh, program. Okay, so if you remember last time, I also showed you about the blank that is just over here. And in gray, you see just the just the mold. So the first thing that you have to know is to position the main coordinate system. So uh, normally it should be on the corner, but on the machine that we have, it has to be at the top the maximum uh, height. So that's why I position it here and then after according to X and Y I was positioning that on the corner. That's why it's located here. If you go in the, the geometry view about the MCS uh, uh, coordinate system then you can see that I uh, define a safe clearance distance of 4 mm, which, which means that uh, when you need to perform a G0 or to be safe, it will be at 4 mm above this, um, above this surface. So when you define this, of course you can move it, it's not a problem. Uh, when you have defined this one, you need to define the workpiece. So when I make edit, as you can see here, in like orange, yellow, I don't know. Uh, this is the part and then what you see in pink is the blank. So you need to define this and when you define it then you need to create the tool. So the tool um, in our case um, we couldn't change it because like it takes time and uh, we don't have that many tools. So uh, our tool was a ball, uh, uh, a ball with a diameter of 16 millimeters. The length was 120, but the the foot length was only 110 millimeters, which is fine, which is uh, more than okay. Uh, you just need to perform the operations according to your tool. If your tool is only 50 millimeters, then you can't make uh, one uh, like one cut. Uh, you need to perform several cuts, otherwise the holder of this tool will touch your blank, and then you can break something. When you have performed this, then you need to perform the program. So, the program is quite simple. Uh, first, Firstly, I'm going to uh, hide the blank, because we don't need any more, and we're going to select what we need to cut. So, back to this. Uh, when you create a, um, an operation, uh, first of all, we create the cavity mill. What is cavity mill? It's the, the simplest uh, task that you can do. It will just take off everything. So usually we take zigzag. You see you have the choice of the method for a part, but like we are going to, it will be like a rough, as I can, I, it doesn't matter, but normally it should, it should be a rough. Um, so you take the zigzag, the percent of flat diameter, it's like 80%, which means that each pass, it will eat 80% of the diameter and then the maximum distance where you can like go deep is 10 millimeters um, select the part and the blank we already made it specify cut cutting areas up oh, it's only this one we don't need to to cut under we only want to cut on the top and then cutting levels you can define what you want but like uh, at the beginning we should cut in polyurethane not in form, so that's why we set up a lot of uh, small cuttings. Uh, but then you can define like uh, less if you have like a form because it's not a problem. 
For the cutting parameters, you don't change anything, if I remember. Yeah, you don't change. Uh, Non-cutting moves. Uh, yeah, you can you can change like if you uh, if you want to retract or avoidance. Uh, we'll not go in detail about this because I didn't change that much, and this is not important. But what is important is the fields and speeds. So here, uh, how spindle of how milling machine is 20,000 uh, RPM, and for the feed rates, uh, we set up by default it's 250, but it's too fast, so we set up 110. And then for the rapid mode, uh, I still stay in a G1 just to be sure to have full control. But of course, you know, you could have like a G0 if you want. It's not a, it's a big deal. But then at least when you have G0, you can't control the speed. So that's why I still keep. And then after you can decrease the speed on the machine if you want. And when you have finished this, then you can click on generate. And then it will generate the toolpath, as you can see here. And it looks a bit messy, but actually it's quite nice. And then here you can verify the toolpath. So usually I take 3D dynamic to see how it will uh, it will be. And then you s you can see that it's well cutting. So I can go faster for you. And when this one is finished, you see you have something absolutely rough. But it's fine, because now we are going to make the contour area in order to have like a very smooth surface. So here we go, just cancel, and then if you take the second one, you can choose what you want. When you create this contour area, I think it's uh, create operation uh, um, in mill contour, and then you have contour area, which is this one. Of course, you have the choice between the other, but it's up to you. I decided to take contour area. And then here's the same cutting area, it's similar, but here in the drive method you have to take area milling. And then you have to define these parameters, 95 for the angle, and then this time you will follow the periphery, like that it will follow, it will follow everything. Uh, I want to have it inward, so it will start from outside and it will come until like uh, inside. Uh, the climb cut you define, but we decided to take this one. Uh, the percentage of flat diameter will take 60. We already took a lot before. And then uh, it has to be applied on part. If you apply on plane, it will not go in uh, deep according to Z. Okay, then you don't touch this one. And then after that, the same feeds and, feeds and speed 20,000 and then 110 milli uh, millimeters per minute. Then you generate, and then you should be able to see that it will be a uh, smoother. And then we are going to check the uh, to verify to verify the toolpath to see how is it. It can take uh, some time according to the the power of your machine. For example, here is 75%. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So you have like something that looks. Smooth. If you think that this is too large or too small, you can change in the parameters uh, in the drive method about the diameter that is eaten. And then if you verify, let's just see. And then here we go. So I will go faster. But then it starts to make something which is very very smooth. Of course, you can be smoother, but it will take more. It will take more. It will take. Sorry, it will take more time. But at the end, your rendering will be okay. Uh, for us, it was okay because after we just took uh, sandpaper and then we were just uh, uh, finishing by hand to have something very, very uh, smooth. But if you make it in polyurethane, I think you might need uh, uh, to be uh, smaller. So yeah, here we go. We have something very, very nice. And then the last thing that you need to do is to you can simulate the machine, but like I already showed that uh, in the last, uh, in another tutorial, uh, so it's fine. And then we're going to use the post processor. Post processor is like a black box, because for example, if I simulate uh, here, uh, path, yeah, 
if I stop, you see that here you have like linear x, y, z, a, b, 0, 2, 3. You see, this is the language, like initial, rapid, it's NX language. And to, to transform this to your um, milling machine, uh, you need to use like a, a G code. And uh, this G code can be uh, created via a post processor that you need to create. So I created uh, some. Uh, we had two milling machines, so I created uh, my own two um, post processors. Uh, NX suggests you some, but then you need to create your own one. So then I have like one here, one here, and then the last one that we need to use is this one because this is the multicam uh, for the big machine. Then you just select where you want to create it. So then I will be like in, in the document. And then you just create a CNC. And when you click OK, it takes a lot of time. But at the end, you get something which is, which is like this. So you have like your function M90, G90, G71. This is the beginning, usually the initialization that is different, and then of course you have at the end, if I can, if I can grab it, yeah, where you have like the G98 and MO2. So when you create this, then you have to just plug it on um, on your milling uh, machine, or on the computer of your milling machine, and then you launch the program, and it will make everything. For the top. It's the same, you see, but this time I created like, I created a uh, cavity mill, then a first contour area, as you can see here, and then a contour area, area here, smaller one, because it's kind of complex here, and like, uh, our tool was tw uh, 16 millimeters diameter, so it couldn't go in detail here, so I decided to make another operation, to have something quite smooth, and then of course I will take off the um, I will take take off the blank up. Yes, perfect. And then of course you can verify the operations. Up. And then here we go. So yeah, it takes a lot of time, especially uh, if you are if you have a low speed rate. Um, so of course you are you are the master to to do what you want, and then uh, it depends if you want to use the sandpaper as well or not. So when you have this one, you make the same operation, post process, and then you create your post processor. That's the end of this video, I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will uh, post uh, other videos and then I will try to uh, um, to change my uh, um, engine for an electric engine and we'll see how it will be. And then I will make other videos uh, about the tutorials in NX. Thank you guys, see you.